Hey guys, my name is Niklas Huschmidt and I'm currently playing the US Masters at Greensboro, North Carolina in the United States. So we just played the fourth round and I played against a strong Ukrainian Grandmaster Yaroslav Cherebuk. He has an ELO of 26-25, so a very strong guy. So yeah, let's go right ahead and take a look at the game. I was playing with the black pieces and he started with C4. English opening, e5, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6. And now maybe the first slight surprise for me, he played e3 here. The other usual moves are g3, maybe a3. Well, g3 is definitely the main move in this position. e3. I still knew a little bit how to play. I played bishop b4, queen c2, and now white might have that option with knight d5 so i took on c3 here and i only knew queen takes c3 but i took with the b pawn after queen takes c3 queen e7 i don't think black has any problems here for example d4 e takes c4 knight takes c4 and yeah knight takes c4 queen takes c4 castle and i think black can follow up with something like d5 and rook d8 so that's completely fine. So he played b takes c3, b takes c3, which kind of looks strange. First he played the queen to c2, to not take back on c3 with the queen, but it's also of course a valid move. So I castled. d3, d6, bishop e2, both developing. Queen e7, now of course there's this positional threat of e4 and he can't allow that because then his pawn structure would pretty much fall apart. So he had to play e4 himself or knight e2, but he went for e4. And now I want to transfer my knight to c5. Um, also of course I want to free up the, the way for my F pawn to play f5 in the future and it's quite a standard plan. You can maybe recognize that this is kind of a reverse Sicilian, reverse bishop b5 Sicilian and I think that's a very common plan here to play with f5 in the future. And now he played bishop g5. Quite an interesting move. I played f6, bishop e3 and I thought the idea of bishop g5 to have to force me to play f6 was to free up the square on h4. So if I play knight c5 now, I thought he wanted to play knight h4. Now I cannot play f5 anymore. I mean, I could, but then I would give up my bishop and I didn't want to do that. But actually, here I could simply play g6, prepare f5 one more time, and I can play now. In the next move and I'm completely fine. So I should have played that. Just knight c5 and he has no way to prevent f5 in the future. But I played f5 right ahead. He takes f5 and now knight f6. If I play now knight c5 he can simply protect the pawn f5 with g4 and that's pretty bad for me. So I didn't do that. So I played knight f6. Obviously g4 is not possible now but he has two up other ways to protect the pawn on f5. d4, what he played in the game, and knight h4. I wasn't really worried about knight h4, but it seems to be the better move than d4. I want to play knight g4. Obviously now threatening to take on e3 as well as on h4, so he has to take this knight. I take on h4, and now you can see I'm attacking the f pawn and the bishop so I will definitely win the pawn back. I can play bishop f3 now. Bishop takes f5. Now bishop d5 check and castle and it seems that he is slightly better here. It's not really that much but um, definitely he has more advantage than in the game. All right let's go back. So he played d4 also protecting a pawn. And now I played knight g4 again. Of course, threatening to take on f5, as well as threatening to take the bishop. So obviously he moves the bishop with tempo, plays it to g5, 
and now queen e8. And after his next move, he's actually already worse. He played knight h4 desperately, kind of protecting a pawn on f5, but he should have just let it go and play h3. Now oh, bishop takes f5, and position is about equal. Actually, after queen b3, I even have the option here to take an f2 and play e4, but nevertheless, the position is around equal. Okay. But he played knight h4, also now attacking my knight on g4, and I cannot play queen h5 here really because of h3. Queen takes g5 and h takes g4, and this looks very dangerous here. He might fall up with g3, f4, um, if I take on d4 now, obviously, and no, I, I didn't want to do that. So. I took on d4, now obviously pinning his bishop, so he can take on g4, and now he played h3, which is good. He can't castle now because now queen h5 is very unpleasant for him because the same variation we just saw is not working anymore because the rook is obviously not on h1 protecting a knight on h4 anymore, so now he has really a problem. Um, probably queen e4 but then queen takes g5, queen takes g4 and here I have a very very good position. Simply going to be up a pawn I guess. So probably something like knight d4 and knight takes f5. So he played h3 here at this point and I have to move the knight and I play it back to e5. I also looked at knight f6 with the idea to play knight e4 and he can't allow that so he has to take on f6 and I thought that's not so clear I'm not winning back this pawn on f5 anytime soon so I was not I was not too convinced of this position so I played knight ge5 and I already saw the following moves it's pretty much forced so he castled now doesn't really have any other move to play also d3 is of course threatening so castle and now h6 and the point is that the bishop doesn't have a good square obviously he can't go to e3 and he can't go to f4 either because of g5 maybe a little bit surprising here but on song doesn't work and well it's a force so he has to take on e5 but now I just take back and now the knight has to move and then I'll win the pawn on f4 I'm f5 I'm up a pawn and of course enjoying a very good position. So he went back to d2 and I want to finally get rid of this pawn on f5 it was really annoying me because it's kind of restricting my pieces so I saw an option here by playing d3 sacrificing myself a pawn in order to free up the square on h5 and it's just the perfect square for the queen. Um, now attacking a knight on h4 and he pretty much has to play g3. He can't play knight g6 because of knight takes d3. Well, and here knight takes f8, probably just play bishop takes f5, and you see the knight is kind of trapped. He could go to e6, but well, I guess there are multiple ways for me already to win knight f. No, maybe not knight f4, but queen g6, maybe attacking the knight one more time. And well, if he moves now, then I can lie, play knight f4 with double threat, queen and mate. So here he has to take back. And now bishop takes f5 doesn't work because of queen d5, but I can just play queen takes f5. And the problem in all these variations in the end is that even with equal pawns, white is always having the very weak pawn structure here on the queen side. So all these positions are always better for me. So in this position he played g3 and now I was maybe a little bit too quick to finally take on f5. Oh well, I'll, first of all, yeah, I took on d3 and then on f5, but I could have played knight e7 and it would have been even stronger um, to prepare to take with the knight on f5 because he can't really do anything right now anyway. So that would have been even stronger. 
But also after knight takes d3, it should be still slightly better. Queen takes, bishop takes f5. And this is what I just mentioned. After knight takes f5, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes f5. I'm having a very pleasant endgame here because all these pawns are weak. So he didn't go for that. Queen d5 check. King h8. And now he made a mistake, I believe. He played rook a to e1. He should have played the other rook to e1. Because there are oftentimes problem with this rook that's sometimes trapped or attacked with bishop takes h3. So he should have played this one to e1. Then maybe I'll just exchange queens with queen f7. And the position is slightly better for me. But of course there's still a lot going on. I was kind of expecting f4, which is for on the one hand, on the one hand, um, weakening the king side, but on the other hand, preventing my knight to come to e5. So maybe knight e7 now, queen f3, queen takes f3, rook takes f3. Now bishop takes h3 doesn't work because of rook e1, but queen uh, bishop h7. And black is also better here again with the better pawn structure, but still, of course, a long game and it's not clear if I'm going to win this. So rook a1, now knight e5 was just obvious that I would play the knight here. And he surprised me with his next move. I thought he would go for f4, but he played bishop f4. After f4, I just want to take on h3 and this looks really good for black. f takes e5. Also rook f2, um, queen g4, king h2, and g5 looks also pretty pretty good for black here. And um, after f takes e5, everything is taken off here. And now king takes f1, rook f8 check, and he has to play king e1 here because after king g1 or king g2 is just being mated pretty much. As you can see here and now check check king h3 is mate rook h2 so knight f3 and now rook takes f3 queen takes h5 and g5 and black will win the queen so he needs to play king e1 and now rook e8 bishop f4 now g5 what i was actually looking at doesn't work because of e6 but i can simply play d takes e5 i have two pawns already plus rook against two minor pieces and obviously the king is very open, way yeah, weakened so I have very good chances here especially since my opponent was in time trouble too but I played bishop f4, I didn't see this move coming and I played c6 now so first of all you might wonder me why is knight b3 not working and I was also I needed some time to figure it out but he can play actually rook e4. It's his only move pretty much. Um, protecting the bishop on f4 so he can take with, back with the rook and also of course threatening to take on d3 and I can't take the rook because my bishop is pinned. So that doesn't work. But there's obviously this idea to play knight e3 and this is why I played c6 to play knight e3 in the next move. But knight g6 would have been a little bit stronger. Now pretty much has to take, queen takes, king h2, rook a8 and position is slightly better for me. We have um, different colored bishops on the board, but still again his pawn structure is weak and also his king is maybe a little weaker than my king because these white squares are already weakened. But I played c6 and now he made another inaccuracy. Actually it's not too bad yet but the next move that he had to find after he played this move is, was really difficult to see. So he took on d6, he should have played queen d1 and exchanged queens here and actually my advantage is not too big in this endgame. Of course now I would like my pawn to be back on c7 to keep everything protected here but it isn't. And now we reach this position and it's still 
slightly better for me but it's not that much and I think white has excellent drawing ch chances. But you take, took on d6 and now you can see my idea now knight e3 and now there's no pin here anymore. So the question was now what would he play? And well after his next move the position is lost and he was short on time and well the move the best move was very difficult to see, I believe. So he played rook e7 and then it's pretty much over. He should have played bishop e5. I didn't even look at this move. But after knight takes e1, rook takes e1, his position, his pieces are very active. And actually you can see some funny variations here. So king g8, bishop takes g7 nevertheless, king takes, and now rook e5 and this pin is very unpleasant. There's no way to get out of it. And let's see the variation the, the computer found. Knight takes f5, rook takes g4, now rook g5. Incredible variation. So queen f6 now doesn't help much because of king g8. Um, so queen d4. <laughs> now king g8, f4, and now black is losing the rook again. Queen takes h3, f takes g5, rook f8 and rook f5 and it seems that the position should be around equal actually. Well, maybe still black is slightly better but it is it should be definitely a draw. So that was still possible but obviously not easy to spot. So he played rook e7 and well, if I take an f4 now immediately, then obviously he can play something like queen d4, simply um, uh, attacking pawn g7 and then the next move, move the rook on f1. So I can play it right away, but I can prepare it. So the question was, how would I prepare it? And I played the only winning move actually, rook f6, which is a very useful move because um, for one, I'm also prote protecting pawn at the square g6, as well as there are no ideas anymore that he can attack the pawn on g7 with his queen. I was also looking at rook a d8, but white has an incredible defending resource here, which I didn't see in the game. But um, it is possible. Rook d7, can you believe it? Incredible move. So, of, of course, rook d7 runs into queen takes f8, and bishop takes d7. Is followed up by knight g6, king g8, knight takes f8, rook takes f8, queen takes d3, and black is better here, but it's far from over, obviously. Equal pawns, and that's definitely not that clear. So I played rook f6, and now, well, queen d4. But now simply knight takes f4 and now we have the same position but with the rook on f6 instead of f8 and it's just a huge difference because now now queen d4 is possible, queen e4 also doesn't help because there are no ideas on g6 so he played queen c7, well best try would be queen d4 but it is pretty much over anyway. Queen c7, bishop takes f1 and now the problem is he would like to play rook g7 with the idea rook h7 and queen g7 made but I simply play bishop d3 um, and protect queen on h7, queen e7, just rook af8 and here everything is protecting I'm simply up a rook. So he took back on f1 and while I was contemplating about my next move he actually resigned here which is definitely uh, appropriate because well I'm simply going to play rook af8 and he actually has to play rook e2 back and well I'm simply in exchange up plus um, his king is still weak, the idea is maybe with g5 in the future so it's just completely over. Alright, so I managed to win this game against um, Yaroslav Cherubuk and well it was an in interesting struggle in the middle game. We were both kind of fighting for initiative or Say it in other words, he was trying to keep the pawn on f5 no matter what, but in the end I managed to get it and then he was left with the weak pawn structure and then, well, the game became kind of concrete and he was low on time 
and then he made some inaccuracies and finally um, blundered with rookie sub. So I'm on four out of four now, so the tournament is going quite well and I'll keep you updated on my Facebook page um, how the tournament is going to proceed for me. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just post them below. I'll read and answer them and see you soon. Bye.